loves and welcome back to another video or welcome if you're new my name is Morgan and today I'm going to be comparing my Chanel wallet on a chain to my Chanel rectangular mini so these bags are quite similar in size but they do have some major differences that might influence which one you go for so I'm going to show you what fits inside compare the prices show you some modeling shots and the features of the bag so let's get into it to compare the size as you can see they're pretty similar where the difference comes in is the width you can see that the rectangular mini is about as twice as wide as the wallet on a chain but you have to keep in mind that this has card slots and this does not so you have to have a card holder so what they fit is not like so drastically different yes you can fit more in this if you're looking at this for an evening bag where you're not going to keep a lot then this would be the better option but if you're looking for like an everyday bag where you can keep like a powder compact and a few little extras in addition to your wallet and such this would be a better option we'll start with the wallet on a chain it has a single chain and it comes from inside the bag on the back it has a little pocket here it's a snap button type of closure that you just push in. It has the pouch running the length of the bag. A fun fact is that it's said that Chanel designed this pouch for love letters, which I think is really romantic and a beautiful story about the history of the bag. I tend to put like receipts and such and like random little slips of paper in here and it just keeps my bag neat. You have a pocket in the front, which is good for like cards or in my building um, to get in and out of security there's like a card that you have to tap so I keep that here because then I can just show my bag like this and it's still secure and not falling out of the back then you have this zipper pouch here which is what I use like coins for and I always have Listerine strips so I put that there and then you have this like slip pocket again great for just like little paper and receipts and then you have the card slots on the back that's enough for me um, to keep all of my cards and I just keep in the change pouch if I have cash I keep it there but I know a lot of us today we don't really carry around a lot of cash so just kind of depends on if you need that or not and there's a big open space in the middle and the leather is caviar with a champagne gold hardware so this one has like a shape where it's actually designed to be like compact and easy to travel with I do know of companies that make inserts to keep this like shaped out constantly I'm looking at getting one of those for this um, I haven't had an issue with sagging or anything because I find that there's not enough that you can put in this bag that's gonna make it sag like how heavy can you honestly make it when it's so tiny it's usually just my phone and a lipstick and maybe a car key in the middle pocket so yeah that I have found over time this bag is held up quite well. This is my rectangular mini, which you saw me unbox on my last video, but the reason I can talk about the features and the wear of this bag is because I had this previously in a patent leather. It's the same exact size, the same exact features. This one is a tweed fabric with silver hardware, and it is a little more delicate than the caviar wallet on a chain, but both bags come in all different types of finishes. I'm not comparing the exact colors and fabrics of the bag because that's a personal decision. Um, with a bag this small, I'm okay with almost any type of fabric, though I don't really like how the lambskin looks in the new mini, but that's another story. So this one opens from the classic turn lock. It is a single flap, and there is a single strap that comes out of the holes in the top. It also has the same pocket in the back. You can, it's hard to see with the pattern, but it's like the little half pocket here. And inside is one big compartment with a tiny slip pouch and a zipper compartment in the back. The chain is a little bit shorter than this one on the other one. You'll see in more detail in the modeling shots later, but I find that both of them function quite similarly. I can't really say one is better than the other. It just comes down to how you want the bag to function and the features that you like best about the bag. There's quite a difference in price between these two bags, so that may be a big factor on which one you go for. So let's get into that. So I actually have another wallet on a chain that's a little bit newer than this one, and this price was higher than this one. So I'm going to talk about price between these two bags because these are the current prices 
of the Wallet on a Chain and Rectangular Mini, at least for the tweed. I got this bag in Selfridges in London. I did get my vat back because I am not a resident in the UK and when you travel to the UK, you can get your tax, like tax or vat or whatever they call it back at the airport if you get the proper forms from the store. And I did that. But this one I got duty free, so that has no VAT included in the price. It's the price excluding VAT is what duty free means. So this one is about 20% less than retail. And when you get the VAT back on the items, it depends on how much you've spent, how much you get back. So in Selfridges, you can combine your receipts. So I had other purchases, so I got a higher that back percent than if I just bought the bag alone because the more you spend the higher percent you get because then the less of a cut the company takes when you get your vet back. So I realized the paper was in there so I just took it out. But this is not a, an exact direct comparison but I'm just telling you what I paid and where I got them because I think it'll give you some insight into the price difference between the two. The duty free price of this is 2,455 pounds. On my card statement the day that the transaction went through, the exchange rate made this bag $3,215. Now you have to keep in mind currency fluctuates, so there may be some difference in the currency at the time that you buy the bag. This is duty free, so that is the price I paid, that was the last price on this bag, and that's the best price you're going to get. The retail price of this bag was £1,920. I got a 13.5% VAT back return rate because I combined my receipts with other things I bought from Selfridges, which gave me a higher percentage back. But at that rate, you could probably expect, if you're just getting the bag only, anywhere between like 11.5 to 12.5% back. It can depend on many factors, so that is just an estimate. That means I got 259 pounds back after I got the money back on my card from this bag. The price that I ended up paying equivalent in US dollars is $2,155. To directly compare, so you can just know it side by side, the conversion rate I paid for this in the US was $3,215 and the conversion rate that I paid for this was $2,155. That's over a thousand dollars difference for these bags. That's going to play a big role in which one you decide because that's a lot of money. Just to compare the US retail price excluding tax because tax varies state by state but the price is listed on the US website for a lambskin rectangular mini the standard price is $3,500. For a wallet on a chain, the standard price is $2,500. You can see buying them in the UK, you do get a better price, but that just shows you there still is a $1,000 difference between the two bags when you're buying them in the US as well. It comes down to your preference, your budget, and what you think about the features if you think that this bag could do everything that this bag does in your lifestyle. Now I want to talk about should you buy pre-loved or should you buy new? And this comes down to a few factors. And I want to talk about these factors because I look at this before I go and buy a bag. I don't like to buy a bag retail. Most designer bags you can get at a very significant discount. But Chanel is one of those unique brands along with Hermes that the, the resale price can often be even above the retail price. So I take that into account before I go and purchase a bag in the store. And both of these bags I purchased in the store because when I looked at them on the pre-loved market, well one, I didn't find this. I thought about this bag for one month and I checked the pre-loved market every single day for one month and I never saw this bag come up. So that's one reason why I bought it retail. And second, this bag when I saw it on the resale market in this color, because I wanted this particular like Tiffany blue color, was going for about $500 more than the US retail price. First thing to know about both of these bags is color plays a big part in what you get it for on the resale market. Any iridescent color, pink and this Tiffany blue and particular black styles, not every black style, but some black styles go for at retail or slightly above retail for the wallet on a chain. So oftentimes if you're wanting a current season color or you're very particular about the color, you might have to go for the retail of this bag because the resale, I like I watched the iridescent pink one for months because when that came on the resale market it was going for like $3,200. got around the retail price but I never saw it really significantly dip from the retail price so I ended up not getting that bag because I missed out on it in the store. I didn't want the same thing to happen with this bag because when I checked this bag most recently the cheapest one I found 
was about $2,500, but that was only one piece. The other pieces of this were going from anywhere between $2,700 and $3,100. So as you can see, by buying it at the price I did and getting my tax back from the UK, I paid $2,155 for this. It's a significant difference from the pre-loved market price. So I actually ended up saving money in terms of this bag, buying it retail, than buying it on the pre-loved market. The color doesn't play as much of a big role in the rectangular mini as the fabrics do. The caviar is super rare right now because Chanel has not done it in many, many seasons. So if you find a caviar Chanel rectangular mini on a pre-loved market that doesn't have color transfer or something crazy wrong with it, you can expect to pay about $4,000 to $6,000 depending on the color. The black ones are insane. They're going for like five to $6,000 a lot of them in a good condition. Of course, if you find a damaged bag, you can get them cheaper, but I would not buy a damaged bag personally. I would buy something that maybe has a little bit of wear marks, but nothing that has color transfer. I'm talking about a decent condition bag when I'm giving you these pre-loved estimate. If you wanna buy them pre-loved, the ones that you can get below retail are more obscure colors that not everyone would want to carry necessarily. They have to kind of match your particular wardrobe or style. So colors like orange or yellow or purple, harder colors to pair in, and I see that like bolder colors like the fuchsia pink, that kind of dips below retail. But the baby pinks and the light pinks are typically above retail. Also, if you wanna get a vintage style, the vintage styles that are not really done today anymore are typically below the current retail price. So that is a way you can get a good discount on a wallet on a chain or a rectangular mini. The lambskin ones, sometimes go below retail. Not at too much of a discount, but the significant discount comes when there's like a damage to the bag. Now, if the damage is on the interior and they knock off like $500 to $1,000 off the bag, which I have seen happen, that's when I would snap it up if the exterior was perfect and save the money. But those kind of deals are quite rare. So I'm just talking in general, like if you wanna get one and you're not willing to wait you know, a year, year and a half to find like the one at the price, I would say be open to the colors and be open to a lambskin in the rectangular mini and that is your best bet to get one quickly at a lower than retail price. I will mention that the tweed fabric is typically lower than retail but I have not seen one in a good condition. And that is because I believe that a lot of people don't know how to take care of a tweed bag. Look out in the description of the condition of the bag for pilling or pulls or like marks on the bag because those are the three things I see most often with tweed bags is like, the fabric has started to pill probably because it's been rubbing up against a rough fabric. I hope that wasn't too confusing. I know it was a lot of information because there's so many factors that go into the price on the resale market. I tried to condense, you know, the research that I do and the knowledge that I have as best I could, but I know it was a lot to take in. Now I'm going to scoot you in a little bit closer and I'm going to show you what fits inside this. I brought you guys in a little bit closer to show you what fits in each bag. Well, this is the big open compartment. Here's my phone, it's the Samsung Note 9. Fits right in there. A card holder because there are no card slots in this. Then we have like a powder compact, a lipstick, my car key, my house key, and this little back pocket. And I would have a pack of Listerine strips here and just like a little pack of tissues. And there's some little tiny free spaces, but for the most part, that is what fits inside. Closes very easily with no bulging. For the wallet on a chain, I have taken my cards out and put them in the slots. There are six slots, I just put two in here so you could see. In this pocket, I would put cash and coins, so I've just got a little bit of cash here, put it inside and zip it up. And then we will start with my phone. It fits easily inside. I can also fit a compact and my car key and house key and then my Listerine strips there. Fits just about the same amount because you don't have to have the card holder for this. 
And that's kind of the bulkiest item I have to keep in this bag. You can see that it's kind of filled to the max, but it's not like overstretched. It's not bulging anywhere. And on this side where there's like my keys on the side, it has like a little room to be squished. I have a lipstick to put in here as well, which can fit. Um, I don't know where it went. You could also fit a lipstick in this little space here. There's a drastic price difference. If budget is really an issue when you're saving up for one of these, I would say a wallet on a chain will serve you almost as well as a rectangular mini. They fit quite a similar amount, so now I'm going to show you what they look like. I thought a more summery outfit would be more appropriate for these bags because mostly they are like light colors and I would wear them in summer. So I'll show you the wallet on the chain first and then I'll show you this mini and then I'll put both on together. For reference, I am 5 foot 6 inches tall and I'm about a US size 4 to 6. So this is how it sits on my body. It comes to about the hip here. It sits quite flat on the body, so it looks really flattering. You can wear it on the shoulder. I don't normally. I find the chain is a bit long for that, but I prefer a bag this size crossbody, so that's fine for me. You can also carry it as a clutch with the chain out, or if you have enough room in the bag, you can tuck in the strap here and just use it as a normal clutch. It can be under the arm, you can hold it in the hand. It's a very versatile, easy bag. I'll show you the rectangular mini. I also like to wear this crossbody. As you can see, it doesn't sit quite as flat on the body, but I don't mind it too much. This one, you can wear on the shoulder and it sits almost at about the same place as the wallet on a chain. Again, I typically just wear this crossbody, but you can wear it as a clutch with the chain hanging down, like under your arm like this. I think it looks quite chic. And then it's not too wide, you can actually hold it in the hand as well. You could tuck the strap in, but the thing is, is like it might slip out because you have this on the top. A little trick, if you want to know, is you can take a little like satin ribbon, open this up, and tie your chain together to create a little top handle on top of this bag. That's one feature I do like. So then you can actually hold it in the hand like this. I don't have a ribbon right now, but I have seen people do that and it looks super cute. So then you almost have this tiny little bag that you can hold top handle, which Crossbody and top handle are kind of tied for my favorite style of bag. I think I might like a top handle better, but in this size, a crossbody makes more sense. Just put them on together so you can see one on each side. The wallet on the chain does sit lower. That's why on the shoulder it doesn't really work as well as mini. But just so you can get an idea, this one does sit a little more flat than this one, so it's kind of up to your personal preference of what style you like on your body. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was a helpful comparison for you. I know they're quite similar bags so knowing the differences can maybe help you make an educated decision about which bag will fit best in your collection. If you have any questions leave them down in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them there. Please consider subscribing for more videos like this. I talk a lot about luxury handbags and fashion and style. Follow me on Instagram to see how I style my bags and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!